Well, joining first. us now in the studio is Atta Barkindo, the executive director of Kuka Center and head of National Peace Committee to discuss the build up to the EKT elections. Well, thank you so much for joining us on Newsnight tonight. Thank I've you. got taken that what's playing out in EKT so far. There's not been any chaos, I guess I would say. Um, the peace accord has been signed. Um, there's the presence of um, uh, security operatives in the state as well. We hear four national commissioners, eight resident electoral commissioners have been deployed to Ikiti. My question is, is that enough from your you know, assessment? Is that enough to guarantee a free and fair election come this Saturday? Um, absolutely. Looking back at what's happened in, in Anambra State, in Edo, in Ondo, and how peaceful those processes were, particularly um, some analysts predicted the total chaos that you see. Okay. I think so far it's, it appears to be very calm, apart from three, four days ago, mm -hmm. you know, some skirmishes that happened between drivers and all that. Otherwise, everything seems to be very, very calm. And I think if it goes the way it is right now, I think that um, we expect the elections in Ekiti State to be very, very peaceful. And yes, we signed the peace committee. Yeah. Interesting. And I'm interested in the peace accord. Uh, in the past, we've seen candidates sign this peace accord, but it did not stop electoral violence. And the case in point is Kogi State. The last elections we had in Kogi, there was a peace accord, but there was widespread violence. How do you ensure that this is not just mere formality? Uh, in a case a candidate or candidates breach this accord, what happens? You're absolutely right. I mean, we cannot fold our arms and, and just sit. We have to do everything we can. In 2015, this accord was signed and it lessened the tension that we saw between Jonathan and Buhari himself. And fast forward that to 2019, the same process. Of course, there was lots of violence in Kogi State. But if you look at the predictions about Ondo, about Anambra, about particularly Edo, we were in Edo. Edo State was very, very tense. It was. But because of the intervention of the members of the National Peace Committee, including the OPA, everything seemed to have gone really peacefully. And I totally agree with you. A lot of people ask the question of what use? Is it mm -hmm. just a mere formality? Mm -hmm. Of course, the members of the National Peace Committee do not have judicial, executive, or legislative powers. Yeah. But in this country, beyond these constitutional regulations, you also require some moral intervention. And really, that is what they provide. So the Peace Committee is working very closely with INEC. Number one, beyond just the optics and the actual signing of the, the peace accord, you find out where there are back channel negotiations, where there are meetings that you know take place to remind them about their obligations to peace and to transparent and credible. Uh, but we also want to reach a point where that accord itself, having been signed by the members of the party, particularly the candidates, can even be used as evidence in the court of law during no judicial processes. So we are working towards ensuring that people are held accountable for violations. Now that's a very important point, being held accountable. It's one thing to sign, it's another thing to breach the agreement mm -hmm. that has been made at the end of the day. And I, I must say I was a bit disappointed when you did say, of course, you do not have any legal backing, um, but I call it now to dish out punitive measures, let me put it, against whoever breaks the agreements that have been signed. But then um, that has also helped previous elections in the past. My question is, from what you've seen so far, what is your biggest worry? What do you, you know, what do you see so far that might um, present itself as a major challenge at the elections? Um, for example, at the Peace Committee, we left some of our staff behind in equity. What they do is to monitor violations or compliance okay. with this accord and report back to the members of the committee in such a way that they can intervene. I think my biggest fear is really whether the political class mm. will live up to their expectations to attend to the concerns and the accumulated grievances of ordinary people. For me, this is really the biggest concern. We can sign all these accords, we can draw up these policies, we can produce all the guidelines and all the legal issues that we have in this country. If politicians and the political class do not attend to the concerns of ordinary people, we are only treating the symptoms. Um, Father Barkindo, I mean, you're right. A lot of focus is put on INEC, the electoral body, to prosecute a free and fair election. But there are also other critical stakeholders that are involved. But I want to ask you, you've been doing this for a while. Why do you think that the stakes are so high 
uh, during elections in Nigeria? What makes it so tense, uh, you know, that people will resort to violence? Because in this country, literally every sector has collapsed. It's like the only industry left to put something on the table is, is politics. I come from the Northeast, for example. There is no single industry in the Northeast that is capable of employing 500 people. A population of over 30 million. No single industry. And everybody waits for election. Because that is the time it is monetized. That is the time people line up. That is the time people... If your own principal is able to win elections, then you are likely to become a PA, to become an aide, to get a job. Your family is likely going to benefit. So at the moment in this country, it appears that that is the only sector that is functioning. The private sector has completely collapsed. Mm -hmm. And to address this issue, whoever wins the presidency in this country, you must attend, that person must attend to the private sector. If you go to Europe, not many people want to work with the government. You can resign your job in the morning at 6 a.m. By 12 in the afternoon, you, you have gotten again. a new job. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the private sector is thriving, it is active, it is functional. It is not the same in this country. And I think for me, this is a big, big you know, area of concern. Well, thank you very much um, for that insight on the build-up to elections. And you have been speaking to Atta Barakindo, um, of course, um, Reverend Father, clearly, as we have seen here, as executive director of KUKA Center and head of the National Peace Committee. Mm -hmm.